Jesus Church. Thank you for joining us for another amazing service. It's going to bring us up there, um, the title of our message today, amen. amen. But before I even go there, I just want to thank the elders and the leaders of this church, uh, Pastor Menelisi and uh, Sister Natemba, and uh, all the elders and all the leaders of the church, amen. amen. They gave me this opportunity that I can stand in front of you and I'm so grateful that I can stand in front of you and I can say something that God has placed in my heart. Amen. Amen. And I just hope that you open your heart. I just hope that you, you are ready to receive. Amen. Amen. It's very important that you open our hearts and, and we receive what God has prepared for us. Amen. Like uh, Brother Sepiso, when he was mentioning about the preparation about this food, you know, it took time and someone's effort to do this. Amen. Amen. So as with Jesus himself, he took time to prepare the message that you are yet to hear. Amen. Amen. So as to say you need to be prepared, you need to open your heart and be uh, ready to, to receive. Be on the other end where you can receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, the title of the message is a Gratitude. Amen. Amen. But now there's a subtitle message which, which is um, Let It Be Known. Amen. Amen. Let it be known. So we're going to talk more about it and we're going to hear what the Lord has uh, placed in my heart. Amen. Amen. Uh, but before we go there, um, as I was preparing this message, I just went through you know, the dictionary and, and just checked what it really means, uh, gratitude. Amen. Because we often understand this as, you know, the way we appreciate people, the way we appreciate God, the way we, uh, you know, do things in a way to say thank you. Amen. Amen. But there's, there's, a, there's a certain definition here that caught my eyes when I was reading this. Amen. And um, this says, the quality of being thankful, and that's the meaning of being gratitude. Amen. Amen. The quality of being thankful. And I did highlight the word quality. Amen. Amen. Because indeed there's a quality of doing things. Yes. Amen. Amen. In the kingdom of God, in the house of the Lord, there is a quality of you being thankful. So it's not just about uh, thank you and it ends there, but there is a quality. There is a way you can do things for the Lord. There is a way you can do things to appreciate when someone has placed or has given you something, has blessed you with something. There is a way you can say, there is a way you can do it. Amen. And this is what we want to hear from God. And then there are similar ways. Uh, in the same definition as to uh, say gratefulness. Amen. Amen. Another meaning of gratitude is gratefulness. If you're great about something, you are being gratitude. Amen. You are showing your, uh, your, your gratif you are gratifying your, yourself uh, for the things that someone has blessed you or has placed on your heart. Yes. And also, uh, it just shows an appreciation. Amen. Yes. When you appreciate what someone has given you, that's also uh, a, a, a sign of gratitude. Amen. Amen. And another way is the sense of obligation. Okay. You, you, you own it. Okay. Amen. Yes. You own it. Amen. It's on you that you can be able to say thank you yes. for whatever you have done. Yes. It is a sense of obligation. Amen. Amen. So it, there is a way, there is a quality of being thankful. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're talking about. And another word is you can recognize it or recognition or acknowledgement. Amen. Amen. You have to acknowledge when someone has blessed you with something. You have to acknowledge when God has done something that you know it wasn't your power, it wasn't your might, it wasn't your effort, but only Jesus that he has done it. He has placed it in your heart, in your life, in your family, in your workplace, and all other areas of your life that God has done something miraculous, has done something so powerful and so great yes. that you can't help it but to acknowledge it. That you can't help it but to say thank you. Yes. That you can't help it but to appreciate what God has done in your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we, we have started by the way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to say this before you sit down. And it's not going to show there, but say about this person. This person did not care about his limitations to access, to gaining what everyone else is getting, to be in places where everyone else can be able to be. He did not care, but all he asked for is, if you will, make me clean. 
and Jesus comes and he says here I am and I am willing be clean Amen. Amen and as we continue the Bible says that immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed it does not take time it does not take God minutes it does not take him to consult for him to come to you amen you might be in the same position as this person of leprosy whereby you are stuck you are stuck in in difficulties in the challenges where you are not able to relieve and lift up yourself and jesus here he comes and he says all he needs is for you to come close to him to come to him and just say if you're willing make me clean and jesus says i am willing and be clean hallelujah Amen. now there's something else here that caught my eyes as well that's verse 43 jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning and i believe some of us we need a strong warning amen, amen. that sometimes and we're gonna we're gonna hear now why why jesus sent him with a strong warning amen. amen and for some reason i was like but then uh why should there be a strong warning you know there is a reason for that and and and, and sometimes we find ourselves that when god has done so great in our lives when god has been so good in our lives that we can't help it but you know let it be known we can't help it but run all over in every other places and go to facebook and go to twitter and go to instagram but that you you just have to express yourself the uh, gratitude of how god has been in your life amen so jesus sent him with a warning amen and 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 and, and to my surprise is that i i thought jesus would just let him you know go and do whatever you want to do but jesus says i'm going to send you but with a warning and 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 the warning says here see that you don't tell this to anyone but go show yourself to to the priests and offer the sacrifices sacrifices that moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them church hallelujah amen. there is a quality of being thankful amen there's a quality of being thankful there is a way you can do things there is a way god wants you to act and behave and do things you cannot just run to facebook and post things and we'll hear now what happened after he ran all over and he showed his gratitude you know because god healed him but there is a way there is a quality of being thankful and that's what we're talking about amen. amen there was nothing wrong in going around and preaching and, and saying all these things and, and appreciating what god has done amen. amen but what matters and what was important is how you can be grateful amen, amen. the quality of being thankful amen. and the bible continues to say that this was uh, a testimony that he must go to preach all of it tell and inform the priest as a testimony amen. amen because there was a protocol back then whereby if you were healed the elders uh, of the church and the the leaders of the community needed to know that you are no longer in separation you are no longer in loneliness you're no longer in the places where everyone is so now they can allow you they can accept you that you can be in the places where everyone else is amen so that was the testimony and we're going to preach more about that as uh, the, the, the the time comes now instead he went out and began to talk freely spreading the news as a result jesus could no longer enter a town openly but stayed outside in lonely places yet the people still came to him from everywhere amen, amen. hallelujah amen. can you see that the way we can act sometimes can make god himself can make jesus to pause a little bit and, and, and it's it sounds as if it's limiting to jesus but let me tell you this jesus was not limited by the testimony of this guy in the town he could be able to go into town and preach and still do what he wanted to do he could go in there and still preach and heal those people who needed healing but jesus sent him with a strong warning for the reason that he knew that if he goes there that which he has prepared or those who were prepared may not hear what he wanted to say amen. amen and the bible continues to say that 
the people still continue coming even though he was not able to go into the town people still flock to him seeking to heal uh, for healing seeking for his help he, they needed whatever they needed to him but they continued coming to him from everywhere that's what the bible says amen. amen so the situation that jesus was in was not limiting to him to his blessings to his touching to uh, the glory that he was carrying amen, amen. amen. i just want to say this the grateful mindset is trained to focus on the opportunity and abundance rather than the negativity and the limitations you are not limited you are not focusing on the limitations of what surrounds you amen sometimes your home your wake your friends your colleagues may limit you because of based on whatever they're looking at you but you're not limited to that when you have got the attitude the attitude of gratitude you are not limited to what people may say upon your life but you know what is in you you know what god has placed in your heart and you're able you are able to do even greater things even though you are in a time that is tight even though you are in a time that you've been separated from the norm from doing everything that everyone is doing but you are able to do greater things you're able to still reach out there and go out and let it be known because god himself has placed something special in your life amen god has changed your life god has placed something that is moving in your life amen and therefore there's nothing that can limit you there's nothing that can hold you i can feel and i can imagine that this guy he went running all over the town and i, I believe this is what he was saying i don't know but i'm grateful i don't know how but i'm grateful i don't know how god has made it but i'm grateful I don't know how he has taken me from that place to this place, but I'm grateful. Amen. You know, it reminds me of Paul and Silas in the prison himself. In, in the prison, the walls of the prison did not limit them. They did not know how or where the help is going to come from, but all they know is that. But we are grateful. They praise God without the limitations of the walls of the prison. The guards that were guiding them did not protect them did not even pose a, a, a limit or anything else that could stop them from praising God Amen. sometimes all we need is to just praise God sometimes what we need is to just be in the spirit and just worship God sometimes all we need is to just stand up and tell how great God is sometimes what we all need is to just stand up and tell who God is Amen hallelujah Amen. and as we are learning this you know gratitude is the testimony amen. Amen. it makes one preach before you know it amen. amen sometimes you may think you're shy but when God has placed something in your life that you are grateful for that you ought to be thankful for nothing can stop you nothing stops you from testifying amen, amen nothing stops you from letting it known amen hallelujah gratitude can humble you amen it changes the way you perceive god it changes the way you look at god amen it humbles you no one else has encountered jesus and remained the same and in a similar way you cannot be hit by a train and be the same it's the same sense you can never you can never encounter Jesus and be the same you can never be healed from the leprosy and be the same no wonder we see this guy he never considered the the instruction that Jesus has given him you know the warning the strong warning that Jesus gave him he never considered that but he went all out and preach a word of God and testify what God has done in his life. Amen. Amen. He had no limitations to that. Amen. Amen. Gratitude glorifies and honors God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It glorifies God. And maybe before I go that, it brings the sense of joy. It makes the quiet people talk. Amen. 
Have you seen people sometimes they don't talk, but I mean, when God has got something in their life, you can tell that God is working. God is at work in their life. Hallelujah. Sometimes you've seen people with the tears of joy. And you begin to wonder, and when you ask them, why are you uh, crying? And sometimes you think maybe there's something that is inflicting them. There's something that is bothering them. And they'll tell you that, you know what? This is the tears of joy. Amen. And you may never know what they're going through. You may never be there to what they're going through. But I'm telling you this, that it is the gratitude in their life. It is the attitude of the gratitude in them that they are able to thank God and to worship God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It glorifies God and it honors God. Amen. Amen. It increases your faith indeed. Amen. Amen. That you can even praise God when you're in trouble. Yes. You can praise God when you're in trouble. And as we looking at this as well as I was looking at the book of John chapter 9 verse 1 it's not there on the on the uh, slide shows where the disciples were asking Jesus was it his father or him that sinned that he was born blind was it him or his father that he was born blind and Jesus says neither him nor his father sinned that he was born blind but for the glory of God to be revealed in him. Hallelujah. It was for the glory of God to be revealed in him. So gratitude can glorify God and it honors God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And like I said, that sometimes it just needs to take you to places where you just forget who you are and just praise Him. And you know what that does is that it makes you be the person, it makes you to be in the presence of the Lord, and it makes your problem smaller, and it lets God be bigger in, your, in the presence of your problem. It just magnifies this, who God is in your, in your heart. It just diminishes how big is the problem in your presence. Someone say that sometimes when you problem, when you face with the problem, you need to tell God or tell rather your problem how big and how great is your God. Tell your problem how great is your God. Tell your problem how great is the God that you're serving. It just changes the perspective of the problem that you're facing. It just changes the inward. It just changes the spirit that is in you. Amen. That you are able to encounter the things that you were not able to encounter. Hallelujah. Only because you have praised God. Only because you have thanked God. You have shown the gratitude. Hallelujah. And I can attest to this. Sometimes many of the things that has happened to my life in the life of my family, um, it has happened because I praised God. Sometimes God will give you things that you did not ask for because he knows what you really need. Oh, thank you. We may need money, but he gives you exactly what you need. Thank you. you may come and pray, ask God for marriage or ask God for work and ask God for healing and things that you think you need. But he gives you what you really need. And this happens in most cases. It happens when you're alone in the corner and not when you're crying, but when you're praising him. Yeah. Not when you are going out on the Facebook complaining about the troubles and whatever you're going through, but when you're praising him. When you sit and worship God, things begin to change. Yes. You do not see, okay, who is there, or whatever is happening around you. But all you know is that you need to worship. All you know is that you need to praise God. Amen. Amen. All you know is that you need to gratify God. Amen. Amen. What seems impossible suddenly, suddenly becomes possible because of the same spirit, because it, you, you, your gratitude honors God. Gratitude uh, glorifies God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. We are about to finish. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. Hallelujah. So as you're having the attitude of gratitude, you need to begin to appreciate someone until, you know, you don't have to wait for someone until they date. That's what I'm trying to say, to praise them, to appreciate them. 
you don't have to wait for Christmas to appreciate Jesus. You don't have to wait until your parents are old enough that you can come to them and, and, and praise them and, and visit them and give them just a call. Amen. You don't have to wait for some things to happen in your life for you to take an action of gratifying them. It, it, it's an attitude. It should just be in you that you can gratify other people, that you can worship God, that you can praise people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The feeling of gratitude and not expressing it, it's like wrapping a present and not giving it. You cannot help it. You cannot have the feeling of gratitude and then just keep it there. You need to let it be known. You need to express it. Amen. You cannot wrap the present and just keep it there. Amen. So you can never have the feeling of, of gratitude and gratifying and, and appreciating and then just keep it there. The book of First Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18, it says, Rejoice always. Praise continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. Amen. Most cases, we, we, we focus more. When we talk about the gratitude, we, we, we feel it's more about what we are going through, meaning in difficulties, in times when we are in trials. But the Bible says that in everything, give thanks to God. There is no limitation to what you can glorify God. There's no limitations to what you can stand up and jump and shout and let it be known for what God has been in your life. You are not limited to the circumstances that you're surrounded with, but you can be able to praise God even if you're sick. You can be able to praise God even if you cannot talk. You can be able to praise God even if you are deaf. There is nothing that can stop you from praising God. There is nothing that can stop you from glorifying God. Amen. Amen. And the Bible continues to say that for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It is in his nature, it is in his will that all be well with us. It is in his nature that whether we are going through difficulties that whether we are happy everything are going good in our lives that we still praise him amen that things are still maintained as to from the beginning to the end of the earth amen hallelujah amen. and therefore i'm saying this to you that jesus should be the reason for this season amen you're all looking beautiful because jesus is the reason for this season amen the gratitude, the appreciation that you're giving is not for Jesus, church. It is for Jesus himself. Amen. Amen. It is for everything that he has done in your life that you need to begin to think, that you need to appreciate him, that you need to take it as an obligation, that you need to take it in you, that you know what, I'll take it for myself. Remember, when God has placed something in your life, it is personal. Amen. No one else knows about what you're going through, only you. So it is your mandate, it is your obligation that you need to stand. That nothing stops you, but that you can be able to stand and praise Him. Amen. Amen. Whether it's on Christmas Day, whether it is on Easter Day, whether it is on your birthday day, whether it is on the times when things are not going on likely or when things are going south, you still need to be able to stand and worship God. You still need to be able to stand and praise God, Amen. May we all stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that God has done something to all of us. That we deserve to praise Him. That we deserve to honor Him. That we deserve to just say, Thank you, Jesus, for who you have been in our lives. Some of us, we could have been dead by now. The devil could have devoured us. But He saved us. He protected us. He fought for us when no one else was there. He made us, he stood for us when no one else was there. He fought for us when things were tight in our lives. When we were about to lose everything like Job, but he fought for us, amen. When things were not going the way we wanted, he was there for us, he stood by our side, amen hallelujah so i just wanted us to thank god 
I just wanted to praise God because he deserves it and that's the reason why we're here. So I just want to ask everyone to just take a minute to thank God because like I said it, it is personal. It becomes your own thing because I do not know what God has taken you from to where he has placed you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of us, we were, we were not supposed to be here. We were supposed to be worshiping the devil at some other place. But he saved us. He took us from th those places places where we could not save ourselves and because we understand that it only took God it only took Jesus himself to save us to put us on the places which are right with him we need to glorify him amen so we're just going to take a second. We're just going to take a minute and then just thank God. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you, God. We just want to say thank you for who you are in our life, for what you have been in our life, Almighty God. Thank you, God, as we are letting it known, Almighty God, that Lord Jesus, Almighty God, you have been so good. You have been so amazing, God. Father, we thank you for everything that, God, you have placed in our lives, Almighty God. We thank you, God, for even things that are yet to come. We thank you, God, Almighty God, for the healing. We thank you, God. God Almighty God, Father, for salvation, God. We thank you, God Almighty God, for the love that has been given to, to you, Almighty God, Father, in this day. Thank you, Jesus, Almighty God, for it is all for you, God. We thank you, Almighty God, as we glorify you, God. We thank you, God, as we humble ourselves this morning. Thank you, Jesus, Almighty God, Father, for the work that you are still doing in our lives. We thank you, Jesus, Almighty God, Father, for the wonderful work that you have done, Almighty God, in our lives. Thank you, Lord, Father, and we worship you, God, for sending us your son, for protecting us, Almighty God, for healing us, Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus, Almighty God, Father, for you are so good. In the name of Jesus, Almighty God, Father, we worship you. And may the church say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.